a fire alarm system. Uh, this is, of course, the addressable system, uh, interactive, uh, with a distributed architecture, which is the most uh, advanced and up-to-date technology in, in fire detection. Uh, you can see a couple of panels or examples how the panel can look like, because you will see later how we can create the fire alarm panel using kind of, let's say, bricks. Um, the system is suitable for any construction sites. There are no limits. It's up to you uh, where you will use the system. So industry, airports, train stations, offices, shoppings, residential buildings, and many, many others. We are with our, with our systems are present in this uh, construction sites in these types of um, sites and, not, and, and much more. And much more. Uh, how can we do and how we do, of course, the fire alarm system which is distributed? Due to the technology that is available right now on the market, we could create the panel which consists, of course, of the controller which is uh, a heart of the, of the system, and also functional modules. And uh, you will see it in a moment uh, on the map of the system, how we do it. These are our bricks that we take and put into enclosures, into cabinets, divide by nodes, and create a distributed fire alarm system. So that's the main controller with 10-inch touch screen with the redundancy on board with many, many uh, functions implemented on that. And we are using functional cards, loop cards for, of course, for detectors for all the field devices, MLD61 and MLD62. These are two loop cards. Both are handled two loops, 250 devices each card. Then we have input outputs, multi-input, multi-outputs with the uh, various uh, functionality, MPS60, two inputs, two outputs, two siren outputs as well. Then we have MP, uh, MPT60 with dry contact outputs. Next comes the multi-output potential uh, module for sirens. We have here four outputs, 0 0.5 amperes on each. Later comes uh, MWK, multi-input for monitoring, for um, supervising other system, other devices in, in your system. High power outputs with high power dry contacts. And conventional lines modules for, for conventional lines, for eight conventional lines to be able to integrate maybe existing lines with the conventional detector and connect them to addressable system. And step by step change the system from the conventional one to addressable. Power suppliers, printer, and these elements, uh, interfaces, which are very important to manage the system to be able to connect nodes be in between. Why? System by nodes, node one, node two, node three, up to 99. We create those nodes. So we take those bricks that you could see before, put them into the cabinet enclosures, and then divide by nodes. And it's up to you because the system can be tailored according to what you need to have. And uh, and then you create a system. What you can do with the system, how, uh, how can you save money on the system, I will show you uh, in a moment. So as you can see again, this is a core of the system, of the fire alarm system, the main part. But what, what, what can we do uh, more? We integrate with the fire alarm system, other systems, other devices. For example, here, you can see power supply units which are controlled and supervised through the addressable loop. As you can see, this is the loop 
and these are power suppliers that you can use in your system. Probably uh, you are using power suppliers in your installation anyway, so why not to have those devices integrated, uh, controlled and supervised by the main fire alarm panel. Next system, which is also integrated, is a smoke control system to releasing smoke from the building in case of fire, which is again controlled and supervised by the main fire alarm system, main fire alarm controller. Next system that we integrate is the gas detection. Gas detection system and the controller, the panel and addressable detectors. So all integrated with the main distributed fire alarm system uh, that I'm talking about right now. Next part of the system is the extinguishing system that you can also integrate. So using the main panel, the main system, which is Polon 6000, you can create an integrated solution, integrated package for, for, the, for the customer, offering power suppliers, offering smoke control system, offering uh, gas detection in car, car, car parks, for example, extinguishing um, in, for example, a server room. Both of the uh, addressable and distributed system, but also an integration between other systems. What we also achieving having the Polon 6000 with at least two controllers because it's up to you how many controllers in the system you use, you will use. There can be only one controller and 99 other nodes or you may have the controller everywhere. If you have at least two controllers in the system, if you do any modification here, it is automatically sent here and here within a couple of seconds one minute maximum, depends on the modification. You can also modify from this panel some configuration of these devices. What's more, if one of the controller fails, you can easily replace the faulty one with the new one, live. The system is working. You don't need to switch the system off completely. You just take it, back, take, take it off, put the new one, and just a brand new controller and the configuration from other controllers will be safe here. This is very important. Also, if you want to choose, uh, change, replace some module which is inside, it is also hot swap ready. You don't need to turn off your system. You just change the module, give the same address and the configuration stays. And now, this is a, a key kind of key to understand the distributed system. Because as you can see here, we have a controller here, controller here, but there is no controller in this, in this place, in this box. It means that you can expand the system very easy and cost effective. Because what you do, you take the enclosure, you take the power supplier here, and you take the functional cards. And those devices are managed by other controllers. This is how you can win on pricing, how you can offer better price. So uh, for example, late uh, yesterday, we were talking about how to save on cabling using this kind of solution. So we have, let's say, I, I used to call it black box, yeah, with functional modules inside and some devices. And if we have a high rise building, you can have every few floors this kind of panel or extension parts and you pull cabling from here one two floor one two three four then another one five six seven eight and then up to you you don't need to pull the cables from the ground floor to the top and this is very cost effective solution because you don't have the controller here which is the most expensive part of of the node so what we have we can lower the price of the system due to this kind of um, solution. We can uh, save money, of course, on, on cabling. What we can do more, full redundancy. 
having two controllers, we have 100% redundancy. We are very, very safe on that side. And hot swap ready for all the modules, including controllers, functional cards, and um, of course devices as well. So you don't need to turn off your system to, to change the devices, to, to upgrade or to modify or to do whatever you want with the system. So I hope um, in this very short presentation, uh, I managed to, to show you how can the fire system work and looks like. So if you have any questions, I'm now ready to answer.